Hey, G-Shop Jams here. Thought I'd take a quick break from the studio and come down to one of my favorite spots here in Charlotte, North Carolina, Swirl, on South Boulevard. Make sure if you're an ice cream fan to stop by this place, you're gonna love it. Anyway, get back to you in a bit, back at the studio. I'm gonna do a video for you today on the DBX 520DSer. Stay tuned. Okay, so we are now back in the studio here at FX Studio 2 in Studio B, where I do most of my recording of these YouTube videos. And as promised, we're going to take a look at the DBX520 module. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that up on my screen. And this is the actual user manual that comes with the module online. And we're going to take a look at the different functionality. And again, later on, we're going to go into how you can apply this DBX520 in combination with the solid state logic drum strip. Now, one thing that I want you to keep in mind as we go forward, as I've said in my previous videos, I don't give audio demonstrations of these modules in my videos. For a very simple reason, you can't hear subtle differences. There's no point in me telling you, okay, watch me turn this knob and listen to the difference that it makes in the sound. When you sitting there at home watching this on YouTube are not going to be able to hear it or at least hear it very clearly the way it should be listened to. So there's no point in me doing that and and we'll just move forward with the understanding that I'm going to give you a thorough explanation of what the module does, but I will not be giving audio demonstrations. So let's go ahead and begin with the DBX520. And this, again, is the user manual. Now, here, it's pretty well laid out, and it gives us different numbers and shows us all the different functionality. We'll start at number one, which is the gain reduction meter, which we see right here. And that goes from 1 to 20 dB of gain reduction. That's pretty powerful. That, that's a lot of gain reduction. Number two, we have the frequency control, which is the knob that we see here. And this frequency control gives us four different frequencies, or I should say five different frequencies that we can select that we want to apply the de-essing to. The manual tells us that if we're using this on vocals, we might, we might want to use a 2.5 kilohertz position. Now, keep in mind, and I've said this a lot in a lot of my other videos, that as audio engineers, there are no hard rules. There's nothing concrete and embedded in stone that we use. We use what works for us. Different vocalists are going to have different sonics to their vocal. Different instruments are going to have different sonics to their the sound that comes from them. So you want to experiment and find out what works for you. You may be trying to go a little bit harder or a little bit less with DSing, you find what you're looking for and that's what you choose. However, again, this particular manual suggests 2.5 kilohertz when we are DSing vocals. But again, experiment because that's what audio engineering is all about. Then below that, we have the range button. And the range button tells us that it sets the amount of DSing that will be applied when a sibilant is detected. Now, before we go on, Let's define what a sibilant is, or as we say, sibilants. And just saying the word sibilants gives you a very good understanding of what sibilants is. Sibilants is that s that you hear when someone speaks with a high pitched vocal, when miking a cymbal, a crash, using overheads or hi hats. Anytime you get that very present s at the end of a sound, with that splashiness that you get with a cymbal in particular, that's what de-essing is all about, and that's what a sibilant is. A de-esser removes that s within the sound and tames that high end frequency so that it's not splashy and sounding horrible to the listener within the track. That's exactly what de-essing does. So, as we can see, the 
DBX520 is pretty straightforward. There's no rocket science involved here. It's a very simple module to use. But before I move on, I just want to take you to this HF only button that we have here. This is what we're going to be using for the most part when we're using this on drums and particularly vocals as well. This is only going to look at the high frequencies because this DBX520 has a capability of splitting the signal into the lows and the high frequencies and then taking a look only at the high frequencies and applying de-essing there. Very, very powerful tool. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and take this down and we're going to take a closer look at the solid state logic drum strip and I'll show you how you can use these two pieces of gear in combination with each other. Okay, so now we're in Cubase Pro 12 and I'm going to go ahead and bring up the solid state logic drum strip which you should see now there on your screen. Powerful, powerful tool. I love solid state logic. You already know that I love Rupert Neve and all of the different gear that they make, but solid state logic makes some incredible gear as well. In particular, their plugins. Now, like most of you, I have way too many plugins in my arsenal. I think we're all guilty of that. But one of the go tos that I always use is this solid state logic drum strip along with the other plugin modules that they make, such as the Violet EQ and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of them out there. Take a look at the Solid State Logic website and see for yourself what they've got available. They make some of the best plugins in the industry as far as I'm concerned. That's my own personal opinion, but I they've never let me down yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at this module and then how we can use it in combination with that 520 de from DBX. I'm going to go ahead and start this track. Now, again, you're not going to hear it because I don't believe in that. You can't hear it, so there's no point in telling you, let's go ahead and listen to it. But anyway, here we see a drum, modern drummer, which is one of the contact from Native Instruments plugins that are available. And I like to use this a lot on tracks where I'm just sketching something out and getting a quick idea of what it is that I want to create. But you can also use this for live performances and you can use this for stems that are sent to you by your clients. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this. On the left side of the screen we have the low frequency enhancer and in the center we have the high frequency enhancer. Then we have the listen mic compressor to the right a gating section on the top left and a transient shaper on the top right. For the purposes of this video, however, we're going to stick with the low frequency enhancer and the high frequency enhancer and take a look at those. Very simple to use. The drum track is going in the background. We can see the kick and the snare here. If I go ahead and activate the low frequency enhancer, it gives us an amount knob where we can adjust the amount of the enhancing that we want to do on the low end. And then we have the frequency selection knob where we can choose which frequency it is that we want to use to add the enhancer to. And then we have this, and this is one of my favorites here, the drive knob. This adds drive, it adds bottom, it adds thickness, it adds saturation, does a lot of things all in one to your particular track. Now you can see here that I've got the snare drum that I have applied the drum strip to. So we're not really going to use a low end enhancer. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. But we're going to use the high end enhancer or I should say the high frequency enhancer. So we'll activate that. And by turning this up, you will begin to hear the differences in the sound by turning up the amount of the enhancement that you're applying to the snare drum. Again, if I use drive, this is either going to add some thickness or some sparkle to that particular snare drum. And then we can choose the frequency that we want to use also. In a nutshell, without going into the listen mic compressor, the transient shaper and the gate, this is what I like to use mostly on my drums. Now, if I go over here to the left side of the screen, you see that I have the DBX as a send for my snare drum. 
we can go ahead and deactivate that or we can activate it here within Cubase. Now, by using the DBX, now let's remember with the DBX, we can apply DSing, which is basically high frequency compression. That's exactly what DSing is. It's going to take those high frequencies and DS them. In other words, I'm applying or I'm sending my snare drum to the DBX 520 and I can use that in combination with this high frequency enhancer and crank that puppy way up or turn it way down, whichever I decide. And actually, if you turn it to the left, you're adding more sizzle. And if you turn it to the right, as I'm doing here, you're adding less sizzle to the top end of that frequency. Now, in order to tame that so that you're getting rid of that s that I spoke about before, that sibilance within that snare drum, that snap of that snare drum, we want to remove some of that so that it's not too harsh. This is where we would go ahead and activate the DBX520, which I have here. It works fantastic. You can get some really great sounds from it. And by just experimenting with the drive, the amount, and the frequency that you're working with within the drum strip, you can come up with some really great sounding snare drums, each sounding completely different from a previous setting. So if I turn down the drive and turn the high frequency all the way up to 20 and turn the amount way up, that setting is going to sound completely different than if I turn the drive way up and turn my kilohertz down to 2 and turn the amount down or turn the amount up. And you can see we're peaking over here. We're getting into the red. That's not what we want to do. So we want to tame it a little bit and take that amount down. But this is the magic of using this DBX520 in combination with this solid state logic drum strip. Not only are you using one, but you're using two different modules to add texture and drive and saturation to your drum. Now again, remember I said that you don't necessarily just have to use this with vocals. You can use it with a snare drum. You can apply it to a hi-hat. Toms, you can use the drum strip for your, and your low frequency enhancer. I wouldn't necessarily use the high frequency enhancer on a tom. However, remember it's all about experimentation, so go ahead and try it. But in a nutshell, this is what you have. This is what it will do for you. A great combination. Okay, so there you have it. There's our quick demonstration of the DBX520 DSer and the Solid State Logic drum strip. Hope you found this information helpful and how you can use the two modules in combination with each other to create some truly unique sounds, staying away from the norm because that's what this channel is all about. Experimentation, thinking outside of the box and coming up with something different. Next video, we're going to be taking a look at the Rupigny 535 compressor and using two of them in stereo because that's the way you should use them. Yeah, you can use one, but when you use them together in stereo using two of them, you get some incredible sounding tracks. Until next time, please don't forget to subscribe, like the video, tell all your friends, your band members, everybody that you work in the studio with, whoever it may be. Keeps me encouraged to keep making content for you. Until then, G Sharp Jams out. Have a great rest of your day. Awesome.